Hi, welcome to the bathtub. It's the old masturbator. You know the whole thing. There's the bird masturbating and the masturbating and the you know, clear, uh, clear light of day and all that stuff. We're doing a few of these in a row because I'm kind of I'm 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 uh, multitasking. I'm I'm trying to sort my books on my shelves and then talk about some of them because I may get rid of some of these books and blah blah blah. This is this is kind of a follow up to these those biographies. We did, did three talks about various literary biographies on my shelves. The problems with a lot of lo great literary biographies is they often aren't in paperback, or if they are in paperback, they're really big and bulky, and they take up a lot of space, and they're wonderful books, and we love them, and we love them as much as most of our fiction, uh, especially some of the great ones, like uh, Damned to Fame by the wonderful James Knowlson. It's great, the great biography of, of Beckett. And, and we, we love all these books. But I have some of these books. They're so huge. I'm constantly trying to s figure out where I'm going to make space. I try to digitize as much as I can. And I, this is a new theme show. It's called To Digitize or Not to Digitize. I think we did something like this in the past, but I forget the theme show's name. So the new theme show is To Digitize or Not to Digitize. What do we do with these big fat books that are just really kind of cool? We want to keep them, or we love them. We just but we don't have nowhere to put them. Sometimes it's easy. I found this book, Charles Nordhoff. I found this is a, gr a garage sale for fifty cents. It's called California, Oregon, and Hawaii, and it's got lots of photos. It's a book from like the mid mid nineteenth century about travels through all these these wonderful places. And it's a wonderful book. I've never read it. But boy, I sure want to read it. It looks really cool. I, I can't. Every time I think of selling it, I think, oh, I can't. But then I look on Amazon, and I'm so sorry. I hate Amazon. But when it comes to cheap Kindle books, if I can buy a book for two dollars and keep it on, on my Kindle, I, I've been doing it. They have this for a dollar ninety nine, and I looked at it. It looks like it has all the original illustrations because there's lots of photos and illustrations. I do want to read this book someday, but I'm going to get rid of it. Okay, so that's going into that. I'm going to put that into to eBay. We're going to we're digitizing that, or I, I only will get it when I need it. Basically, that's what it comes down to. Here's a book I've had for millions of years. Uh, it's the Selected Letters, first edition, Nab Nab Nabokov, or is it properly pronounced Nabokuki? And um, I'm, we're all big fans of the Nabokov here at the bathtub. I get all the letters of all these writers that I love. I always collect their letters, and I do like browsing through the letters. But, you know, do I really want to read all those letters of Nabakuki's? Um, do I? I've read through them. I've enjoyed them. I really enjoyed the letters he did with, with uh, Edmund Wilson because their friendship was so fascinating and they were such interesting characters. But they look at the size. It's just a huge amount of books. Now, this becomes easy. It's on Kindle. I can get it for... It's, all the, Things like this are real expensive on Kindle. But if you look for sales, sometimes they come up on sale. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna get rid of this, and then whenever I need to read it, I'll I'll bite the bullet and, and buy something from this horrible company. But uh, at the same time, that might be on sale. When it comes on sale for two or three bucks, I always pick up stuff like this for the library. This one's a little harder to find. I may keep this. So I think I'm gonna digitize, and I'm not digitizing because this is not available on Kindle. There's a later edition, actually an expanded edition. Do I want to read more letters by Edmund Wilson and no, no, Nabokuki? I don't know. I don't know if I need more letters. Anyway, I'm going to probably... I'm not digitizing that. That's going into digitizing. We're getting rid of that. Here's one I carried around with me for decades. We like James Joyce at the bathtub, but we're not crazy about him. I, I think every time I read uh, the Ulysses book... I think I'm never reading this again. And then 10 years later, I start thinking, I kind of like to read it again. <sighs> Some of these writers, their letters, this is a big fat book. <sighs> it's actually quite expensive still. It's, I have never, I've, I've read it, but I've never made notes in it. When I don't make notes in a book, then it's easier to get rid of it. Because mainly it's just because I don't want to get rid of my notes because it's easy to browse through it and find the stuff that most interested me. <sighs> so I don't have to worry about that. It's not available on Kindle. This is a tough one. I just don't have room. And I've already put books in the places that it was in. I think I'm going to sell it. I could probably get decent money for it. And it will eventually come to Kindle. And basically, most of Joyce's letters are about trying to get money from somebody. You know, a lot of writers' letters are just always like, can you send me 33 quid or my wife needs 10 quid or such and such. I'm not really interested. One of my favorite books. I love this book. Damn to fame. I carry it around. It's like a brick. Lots of great photos. 
beautiful piece of biography writing, fascinating guy. Can't help but I can't help but love him when I read this book. I carry it around and carry it around with me. I've decided to digitize. It's available in Kindle. When I, and it has notes in there. I did make notes, but not a lot of notes. It, it's really it's just a great read. I'm going to digitize it. I'm going to get rid of it. I don't really want to, but there's these choices. Here's a really tough one. The two volumes. We talked about this in the, dip, the, the biography thing. Two volumes. Look at that. Look how big that is. I swear to God, it's huge. It's gigantic. I want to digitize these. They cost a lot of money. They're like twenty or thirty dollars a piece when you get them on uh, Kindle, and I have lots of notes in these. So because there's notes in the pretty extensive notes, particularly it helped me understand some of the some of the odder books. I haven't read, I haven't read these in ten years. I'm not I'm not digitizing those. Every six months, I look at this gigantic book. I reviewed a bunch of writers, a lot of the. Frankfurt School t types, uh, Europeans living in, in L.A., wrote it for the L.A. Times years ago, and they had a wonderful editor there, and uh, Drew Tewksbury. And um, the collected Bertolt Bre poems of Bertolt Brecht, look at the size of that. It is like tw 1,300 pages. Now, I didn't read through this whole thing. I browsed through it and read lots of stuff that I liked. Every single sentence I read in this I loved. Every line of poetry I loved. Every poem I read I loved. These are, these, they're kind of a mix of philosoph philosophy and, and observation and the real cantankerousness of a really interesting critic. It's so damn big, I want to get this on Kindle. But at the same time, every time I open it, I, I read something, I really like it. And I can't get rid of that one. I'm going to keep that one. Okay, here's another tough one. We're big fans of Dickens. I had a lot of first editions of Dickens I collected in London. The last one of the last ones I don't want I wanted to sell was my favorite is David Copperfield, too beautiful. This is actually a really nice copy. I think I bought these somewhere in the, somewhere like in Canterbury or something in London in England when I was traveling for various reasons, and it's a good copy. It's one of my favorite books. It's a two volume. I've got copy. I got it in paperback. I gotta sell it. I don't really want to sell it, but I, I don't have room for these damn things. Clarissa, our old friend J.A.F., John Andrew Frederick's a big fan of this book. I'm a big fan of uh, Samuel Richardson. We've talked about him. Real crazy, completely crazy. He's, he's bug-fucked, this guy. Crazy. I can't say that that word I just said. I take that back because then I have to tell the grandma and the kids can't see the show. So it's, he's just crazy. And they're kind of obsessive fantasy. They're a mix of romance novels and pornography. There's no actual sex in them, but the, the obsessiveness and the observations and the, and the uh, fascination with the woman's body and the men sneaking around, hiding, and trying to get, get this girl in bed, it's endless. I never read this book. I love Pamela. I read about 150 pages of this many years ago, like one Christmas. I wanted to read it at Christmas. I just couldn't get around to it. I bought this on Kindle. The Penguin edition of Kindle was available for $1.99. And it's, you can read it on Kindle. But I do want to read Clarissa, and I've sold like three copies of this. That's the other thing, is I keep buying these books and then selling them because I don't have room for them. And then I sell it, and I think, oh, I'll never find another copy. I'm going to keep this. It's hard to get rid of it. I do want to read it, and I, do, I, I suspect it's a great novel. Okay, we're big fans of Arthur Mackin here. Tacking the Kraken with Arthur Mackin. We did a, lot, did a lot of pieces on, Mac, on Mackin. We're going to do more. This wonderful three-volume from Hippocampus, is it? St. The great, the estimable St. Joshi edited them. These were the advanced reading copies before they were corrected. And one of my favorite British novels, or UK novels, which is The Hill of Dreams by Arthur Mackin. One of the really weird, fantasy, beautiful, beautiful piece of work. Wonderful writer. All of his work is in this. I got this on Kindle because because Hippocampus was giving them away free during the pandemic. They're a great publisher, and it's the finished edition. Look at the size of that. I don't want to get rid of it because I do love my copy of The Hill of Dreams in there, but I'm going to get rid of it. It's going to be it's going to go on the it's going on the eBay pile. Here's a book. Oh my gosh, I really enjoyed this book. Alec Devalli, astounding. But look how big it is. 
I actually have this on. I, I got this as when I was reviewing it. I also got the uh, Audible version, so I could listen to it when I was traveling. And I listened to it on Audible, and I had the hardcover. I got lots of notes in it, and I got so many notes. And the stories are so fascinating. These guys. I mean, that's going in the digit. We're digitizing, digitizing the Mark Mac and fiction. I can't get rid of this yet. It's just got too much material in it that I like. I wish I'd gotten it. Oh, by the way, one of the reasons we're making space, and you want to make space in your libraries, is for our sponsors. Reading Great Books in the Bathtub, the home edition, and On the Planet of the Bold Women, the, the normal edition. These, these, these wonderful books by, the, by, the, by yours truly, the master bather, and his guys as a writer, and a self-publisher. These are available, and we want to find some room to put those wonderful books, right? Here's a book, kind of easy. I've been carrying this around for years. I picked it up for a dollar at a thrift shop. Steinbeck's Life and Letters. We're big fans of Steinbeck. The dogs are barking. That's not our dog for once. We don't care. Uh, big fat book. Covers a lot of space. It's available on Kindle. So when I do need it, and when I do need it, I can get it on Kindle. I'm digitizing that one. And this is one of my favorite writers. This is where it gets tricky. Selected Letters of Dashiell Hammett. We're big Dashiell Hammett fans here at the bathtub. Nice copy. I mean, basically, I've just browsed through it and read pieces and pieces here. It's, it's a huge brick. It's not available on Kindle. You can't get that digitized. It's kind of a hard book to get. It's not totally rare, but it's difficult. But I have to start thinking, am I going to read these all these letters? I'm not going to be around that much longer. Uh, maybe another... What am, what am I? I'm 68. I'll, maybe 130. I'll make it up. So 40, 50 years. Am I going to actually read this in 40 or 50 years? I doubt it. Digitizing it. Here's a harder one. I, here's a book I've sold twice. I've had it two or three times. Francis M. Nevin's wonderful biography of, of the really great, twisted, unhappy Cornell Woolrich. Look at the size of that book. It's dense as hell. It's actually a very poorly public, mysterious press. It's not the press's problem it's the it's just the print and it's just this big solid fat book uh, and it's really there was never a paperback a and you can't get that on kindle i gotta keep it i really enjoy this biography i'm about halfway through it and i, I, I kind of let some some books i read along while i'm reading the writer's work and i haven't read wolverich in a while but i gotta keep that it's gotta, gotta find a fine space for that on the shelf it won't be easy so that's staying okay so the summary is everything's going Except uh, uh, this one, this this big bulky biography of Cornell Woolrich. We're going to keep us down in another year or two. I I don't know if I'll ever. I got to keep I got to keep this because I do do think it's going to be a great book. And every time I look at it, every time I try to get rid of the Bertolt Brecht poetry, I read a uh, the first just the poem is called "Visit to the Banished Poets." When in a dream he entered the hut of the banished poets, which you may find alongside the hut. Where the banished teachers lived. You read two lines of his poetry, and you want to read some more. All right, that's that was an experiment in 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 book tubing. It's to digitize or not to digitize. We may do that again, just because I'm. It's, it's one of my perennial questions here at the bathtub. Stay safe. We're doing these very quickly. I'm wearing the same shirt because I only did this in, the, in an hour or two. I, I do change my shirt. Bye. <laughs>